My name is Marcus and this is my video out. Hi, I'm Marcus. I... Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Outtakes. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> um, the thing that I'm thinking about right now is just cats. <laughs> I love cats so much. I've been watching cat videos all day and like snuggling my cats and just like cats. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Hi, I'm Marcus. I use he, him pronouns and I identify as bi and trans. Is that it? Awesome. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm from here. I've lived in the same house in Crestwood my whole life. So I'm a Birmingham native, Alabama native. I think 12. I, uh, I had some friends in like middle school who were talking about it and I was like, hmm, I think I like boys and girls and I was really messing around with my gender expression and stuff because that's kind of the age where you start thinking about stuff like that and uh, I, I don't know, I never really thought about it, like having a label for it, I was just kind of like, everybody's pretty but now like at that point I think I realized that it was different than other people it took me a lot longer to realize that because I cycled through a lot of labels and it was hard to find something that actually worked um, and I guess I was trying to be too specific about it um, but I, I like expressing femininity and masculinity, so that confused me because I thought that being feminine meant that you were a girl, but that's not <laughs> the case at all. So I, I guess it was a few years after um, that I actually came out. It was like ninth grade or something. Probably my partner at the time. I think probably like one of the biggest struggles that I see in Alabama is people using religion as a weapon um, against queer people. Don't think that's cool or fair at, at all. But also, um, I've seen a lot of people using religion as a good thing in the South too, but just mostly in Birmingham. But um, just a lot of people, it's kind of hard, it's like so many different things. Um, I don't know, I guess people thinking that being Southern is not being queer and that it's being like a redneck and whatever, like just from people like outside of the South, just assuming that since you live in Alabama, that there isn't a queer community at all. Um, so even like the queer community in Alabama is kind of outcast from the rest of the community in the U.S. Um, well, personally, I think I've been really privileged in my uh, transition and coming out and everything because I've had a fairly supportive family and growing up in Birmingham instead of somewhere else. My family is from Louisiana and so that has affected me a lot because I can't come out to them because they have very southern values and um, I guess a lot of the older people in the south um, are less accepting because things are just kind of different down here politically and socially and stuff. Um, so. I don't know. I guess it hasn't affected me as much as it probably has other people. Um, I can't say that it's made a huge impact in mine that I can no notice. Um, so it kind of changes every interaction 
all day, every day for me. Just kind of, it's like an underlying thing that I don't really think about, but it's kind of something that I always think about at the same time. Um, I don't know, I guess uh, it makes me a lot more self-conscious, just in general, not even like disliking myself, but just kind of being really aware of how I look and how I sound and everything, um, and how people perceive me. Um, and it definitely uh, makes social interactions and going out and talking to new people and stuff much more anxiety inducing. Um, so um, I think the internet has helped a lot with that, like making friends over the internet and stuff because you can like be yourself on the internet and people don't perceive you for what you look like or what you sound like. So I guess that that's something that I'm glad that I have right now. Oh gosh. Um, I think that one thing that I'd really like to change is just people like being more educated about it. Like there are so many people in the South that just don't even know about gay or trans people or if they do, the only education they ever had about it was negative things or hearing that was wrong. And I also really would like sex education in Alabama to include gay and trans sex um, or even just like same sex stuff um, because currently in the system they're not even allowed to talk about it um, and focusing less on abstinence about it as well. Um, and also um, letting bi and gay men be able to donate blood. I don't know. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I guess like having just rules for like all hospitals not to be able to, and like homeless shelters not to be able to turn out gay and trans people, because I know that they do a lot. Um, and like just having like rights of service for access to everything for everybody. Um, especially um, like public resources for homeless people or like marginalized people. Don't rush it. When I was younger and I wanted to figure out who I was, I would put like a million different labels on myself or who I was romantically attracted to and who I was like physically attracted to and like when and where and for how long and like just all these constraints on myself just trying to pick at every little thing but I think just you don't have to have a label like I think it's really good to just realize that you can just be like I'm a queer person like I and just kind of roll with that until you get a bit older and figure out um but and it's also okay to make mistakes with it, like realize that you're something that maybe you didn't think that you were a few years back and that's not a problem with you or anything for realizing later in your life. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's never too late or too soon to realize that you're queer and um, there's never really a wrong way to do it. I... Oh... <laughs> That's a hard question. <laughs> My favorite part about being myself... I don't know, I guess I'm gonna go off of being queer and that aspect of being myself. I think that part of it is really even though sometimes it can feel like a curse, it's really just kind of a blessing in disguise because I can meet somebody and like we know, we like realize that we're both queer and it's like there's an instant bond. Then we have like a mutual respect for each other. Meanwhile, if I just met somebody like else, it may maybe not feel the same, but 
like you kind of understand each other on a different level, you know, the struggles and everything. A tight, tighter sense of community even with people you don't know. Yeah, so like it, it definitely, it comes with a community and it comes with friends almost. Like I've met so many friends through the queer community and so much support and so it's been really, really great for me. Um, been really nice. Yay. Yes. I like talking. <laughs>